I just heard that our women beat Texas at Texas. That's, that's uh, quite a big win for them, and uh, congratulations to them. And I know our women's soccer team is uh, moving to round two of the NCAA tournament against Penn State. So, you know, our, our basketball program, you know, we're all one, and uh, we, wish, we wish both of those programs well. But Adia, a uh, great job uh, winning at Texas. Uh, that's, that's quite a statement about where uh, our program is going. In terms of the game here this afternoon, uh, really proud of our team. Uh, we got contributions from a lot of players. You know, one of the, I think, um, trademarks of this year's team is our, our depth. And on given nights, we really truly do have individuals that are going to have big nights off the bench and different players uh, can step up. And, you know, I thought our defense in the first half, that first 20 minutes, uh, reminded me of kind of where we were a couple years ago. You know, we had 25 deflections at the half. That's a stat we keep. You know, our goal is, you know, between 25 and 30 for a game. We had 25 in the half, and it, that shows you that we had a lot of players playing with uh, tremendous effort and also in the right place while they're playing with great effort. So, you know, I think when you play a deep bench, you can really find that defensive pressure and you can continue to do it throughout the game instead of wearing down. Uh, can't say enough about Zeke on offense. Um, I know it's a little deceiving. He didn't get a field goal attempt in the second half, but he did go to the foul line a few times. Uh, it's our job, it's my job to make sure that we get a guy like him the ball because uh, I think he's made over 15 in a row. You know, that, I think that pretty much speaks for itself. But he's really efficient and he's strong. And uh, we'll continue to develop that part of our team where you want to have that balance of ball gets inside, ball gets to the hot hand, and then we mix in, you know, three-point shots with that, a, a real good balance, you know. The analogy that I would use to our players is it's like that college football team that, you know, they look great, that all they do is pass, but it's just like, you know, if you don't establish any type of running game, eventually you're going to run up against your equal and you're going to wish you did. We want to make sure that we have good balance. And sometimes finding the roller, throwing it inside a little bit more often, um, I think will be something that will serve our offense well. But we'll take it. Uh, great respect for New Mexico State. They're missing a key player, really two, but their point guard is outstanding. And uh, hopefully they'll get him back and have the season that they're they're going to that they expected. Have you had a player before go through a stretch like Zeke's having where he's out and missing missing shots? Can you remember? Any player that you've had? You know, we've had a few. You know, Derek Williams really had one of, one of those, I, I think, game, uh, stretches in a season where it just seemed like you know, maybe he went something for 16 for 20 or something like that. Um, you know, usually it, it is a big guy. Maybe DeAndre uh, Ayton was, was like that for periods of time. But, you know, Zeke's off to a really good start. Uh, you didn't hear his name as much maybe before the year as some of the other guys that we've had here. But, you know, for a four-star recruit, I think he's doing it exceptionally well. Is this the best shooting team you've had here? I think so. Um, back to Derek Williams in, in uh, year two there when we caught fire. Uh, we had a lot of guys coming in and off the bench, and some of our starters that shot a pretty high percentage. You know, Kevin Parham, Jamel Horn, Brendan Lavender, Jordan Mays in his freshman year, uh, and then Derek. But I would say that uh, our firepower from three you can really feel it in transition, and uh, it's something that's, that's not going to be as easy for the defense to to deal with this year. And if the uh, the reserves like uh, Baker, and some of the other guys, there's no drop off on the perimeter with that. Yeah, I mean Jamal played 16 minutes and 30 seconds, and uh, he had no turnovers, and he had 16 points. He was four for six from three. Both Max Hazard and uh, and Jamal are really doing a great job of taking care of the ball. If you look at their assist to turnover ratio, you know, today was five to zero, but you know, very seldom do you sub perimeter players in like that and they play long stretches without any turnovers. And uh it was really good to see. You know, Dylan Smith, Dylan played twenty three and a half minutes, had zero turnovers. So we had twelve for the game and uh again I'm twelve, eleven, ten, that's where you want to be at. You'd rather play them with their other guys? Um, yeah, of course, yes. I mean, you, you want to win every game, so uh, you'll take it. But when we, when we signed up to play New Mexico State, you know, they're the team that really had Auburn beat in the NCAA tournament. And 
And they didn't just get hot. They won 30 games. And a year earlier, the same group won 28 games. So they know how to win. They're really tough-minded. And um, like I said at the beginning here, um, I'm, I'm hopeful that they'll get their point guard back and uh, go on a big run. The pick and roll defense was an emphasis for you guys heading into this one. How would you evaluate how they did? It was the best our big guys have done in a long time. It's been a weakness of ours. Uh, you know, I, I think that you know the words that I've used to those guys is you know it's it's kind of that definition of insanity. You know, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, but yet you're expecting different results. I mean, well, we have to be better in that area tonight. Today we were. I mean. Man, our bigs were out early. They they hard hedged, they covered for each other. They ran. They did it for the entire possession. And the one thing that I'll say, it's easier to play defense like that when you have subs, and you can call on guys who aren't starting to come in and continue it. So, you know, part of our defense and our deflections were what I said, and that is that we played ten players. How did you like the lineups where he was at the five and kind of anchoring things? You know, Zeke is a mismatch at the five offensively, and we're looking at that a little bit. But in our five position with, you know, usually Ira and Chase, you know, mixing in Christian a little bit and, and Zeke, you know, you have four different players that can do that. Uh, you know, I, I'll just speak to it. A year ago we had one sometimes, and that's the worst feeling in the world. You know, you just doesn't matter what you do in ball screen defense, it's not going to work. So we, we really relish the depth that we have right now, and it's up to us to take advantage of it and, and develop it. That was a fun matchup to watch between Trevlin and Queen and Josh there in the first half. Queen had a pretty solid first half. He's a pretty prominent player within their conference. I think you guys did a good job of shutting him down in the second half. What changed with, with, with the matchup there? Queen is very good. You know, I thought he, a couple of his individual baskets, he, he just really created. I mean, he just had a couple, great move on the baseline in front of our bench. Uh, a couple times late in the clock, you know, four, three, two, he just took the ball and, you know, hit a floater or made a deep shot. But, you know, our team guarded him. You know, Josh Green's an excellent def defensive player, but Dylan Smith does a good job. Uh, a couple guys coming in off the bench did a good job as well. But we played uh, we played with a lot of energy on defense tonight. We gave maximum effort, and, you know, that's what this is about. We don't have 82 games. You know, we, we only have 31 that we play in a regular season, so... You know, you have 17 at home, trying to make every game count and, uh, you know, really kind of utilizing a year ago as motivation in a lot of ways where when you don't have something, you tend to uh, you tend to enjoy it more when you do. And, you know, our lack of depth versus the depth that we have, um, I think all of us are eager to just continue to utilize that to our advantage. How would you summarize Nico's competitiveness on the court? Nico has uh, great, great confidence, great confidence. And uh, I really believe that the more he's challenged, the more he rises to that challenge. Uh, he hit that spurt in the second half where, you know, you really see his ability to make shots. Uh, he wasn't able to play a complete game just because he got himself in foul trouble. And then obviously with the score being lopsided, uh, we got him out of the game at the end. But um, I was very pleased with how he played. How much do you talk to him about his over exuberance at times, or do you just let Nico be Nico? Yeah, no, we want him to be. We want him to be like that. You know, uh, obviously, you don't want a guy to pick up a technical, but you know, I'm, I don't think he he really wanted to pick up a technical as much as that he, you know, the, the guy was really challenging, and then you know he met the challenge, and sometimes that happens, but he'll learn from it. What I, what the biggest lesson is, you get now he you have three fouls. You know, a technical foul is a third foul. Pick up a fourth, it can really change the game. But I want him to play with emotion. I, we want him to be confident. Um, that has a way of being contagious. And, uh, you know, I, I think we've had players here in the past, even before I showed up, that had that. And that's, that's an attribute you want a guy to have if, uh, if he can back it up. Did you sense then maybe there was a conversation going before that? Because before Nico hit the two, that you know that kind of led to that. And like, you know, not really. Though those guys play really hard at New Mexico State. They pressure, and I'm sure they were talking a little bit. There's nothing wrong with guys competing against each other. Uh, you know, I was disappointed it it ended in a technical, but that's something Nico will learn from. What are you hoping from Devonair as you ease him back? Number one is what you just said. You know can't go from zero to 100. 
you know, we, he missed games. Uh, he missed he missed time for his own doing. So it's now up to him to in, integrate himself into both, uh, you know, game situations. He was practicing, and uh, but he's a talented player, and he can help us in a lot of ways. Uh, so we're, we're kind of taking that one day at a time and really relying on his uh, continued development. You've had elite defensive teams here before. Where do you see this team's potential on that end? Well, we're deeper, and with our depth, we're trying to teach our big guys to protect the rim, you know, go for a shot block, go for, draw the charge, be more physical, don't play it safe. It makes no sense. Uh, we'll play a guy with two and three fouls who, who's a, a front court player. So I, I thought their activity tonight was, was outstanding. And what about on the wing, like guys like Dylan and Josh? You know, same thing. You're really defending the ball with pressure and uh, – you know, following our rules. Um, somebody like Josh, he hasn't played a lot of college games, so every time that he plays, he gets a little bit more comfortable. So even with all the other options you had going in the second half, you'd still like to see Z get, like, say, ideally X amount of shots, or how many, you know? Well, I would just say this. You know, it, it's our job as a coaching staff to recognize who's playing well offensively. And when that player, you know, has the hot hand, you know, you want to continue to put the ball in his hands in scoring position. You know, jo Zeke is getting fouled. He's shooting high percentage shots. You know, he's made 15 in a row over two games. Uh, same thing with, like, a guy like Chase. You know, Chase is off to a slower start scoring, uh, but I thought he did a great job rebounding tonight. He had eight. You know, big guys, they're like those offensive linemen sometimes. You know, it's like you want them to block, 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 but you got to give them some sugar. And in basketball, you got to get the ball once in a while. And I think finding them when they roll in transition, not just looking for threes, making sure that we get the ball to the low post once in a while, uh, it's important to have balance. So, you know, it's both balance and also, you know, if you're a good player, you recognize, hey, Zeke hasn't missed. So we want him to shoot nine times instead of seven. In your view, too, was there anything different New Mexico was doing that you thought was No, different? and he did get fouled. Uh, he did get fouled a couple times, so you know you have to count those as shots. Anything else?